of 2007 and right after I came back from a trip got in a car and it wouldn't start and it took me about a probably like 24 hours I guess total of trying to figure out what happened and why but hopefully this will save some people time and money but I'll show you what happened to me right after I came back from the trip and we got the uh, went to start the car as normal put the key in and it does what it usually does is you get the key symbol of course this that's normal close the door and that'll go out um, but that was the only thing you would do pressing the button did absolutely nothing like normally right you press the button and everything powers up you'll be able to put the car in neutral or whatever you want to do with it but that part of it didn't work at all. Did absolutely nothing. And these are the steps I took to figure out what happened. All right, when I started troubleshooting, initially I thought about the starter, but um, thinking about it, because pressing the start stop button never powered up the accessories like it's supposed to, I uh, knew that couldn't be it because the starter wouldn't be getting any power. Of course, next I went to the battery, took the voltage on that, and the battery voltage was fine. But I did think, you know, the battery was old, been in there a while, so I went ahead and pulled the battery out and uh, went up to the AutoZone and had them check out the battery. And uh, they did say it's down to 60%. Like I said, the battery voltage was good, but you know the cells were starting to get wore out, so I went ahead and bought another battery and uh, put that in, but no help. Now, I think at least a couple of times before the car uh, quit starting, I did have to reset the clock. I'd get in the car uh, different times, usually after sitting uh, for a while, and this would come up and I'd have to reset the clock, but the car started and everything appeared normal. Okay, once the car was starting again and before I disconnected the IBS, I did have this message uh, once or twice, I think, um, increased battery discharge. It was thinking the battery was being discharged while it was sitting. Well, this turned out to be the problem. It's the intelligent battery sensor. Pretty cool piece of technology when it works, but it sure can cause a lot of problems. Now, this IBS is actually a microprocessor and it monitors uh, several things. Of course, voltage, charge, discharge, it even monitors the temperature of the battery. Now, there is a good site you can go to. Just go to beamerscan.com and it goes into great detail on what this thing does if you want to read about it. Pretty interesting. And some more information about what it does. It even monitors your uh, starting current, uh, closed circuit, and this thing is uh, always active. Um, it's even programmed to wake up every 14 seconds when a car is just sitting there. So it's always monitoring what's going on. And also, this is why BMW uh, wants the battery registered, is what they call it. But basically what they're doing is uh, putting in the information about uh, when the battery is installed so they know how new or old it is and then what cranking amps that it has because it needs that for the calculations uh, to monitor the health of the battery. Now if this IBS is bad and you need to repair it, there's really the only thing you can do is replace the whole assembly. I don't want you to splice in anything, uh, make any kind of changes or modifications whatsoever. Could, it could affect, because it's so sensitive on its measurements, uh, it may not work right. Now, of course, this is assuming your battery is good and the IBS is giving faulty indications. Um, like my case, I didn't know about this sensor yet, and I did go buy another battery, but it wasn't needed. And these are 
some of the conditions, those control messages like what I had, like my case, a no start. And then this thing could even, look at that, it can reduce blower speeds, heat seats operation. This thing can uh, load shed all kinds of systems. So just think of multiple problems or strange problems you can have uh, electrically uh, if this IBS is going bad. Now it turns out if you have problems with this sensor you can actually disconnect it to check it out and see if that's your problem and replace it or in my case I just left it disconnected. Um, remove my positive uh, connector. It actually hooks up just below here. There's another connector there and then the um, blue connector goes up right there on that side. That's your obviously negative portion. That, this goes to your um, engine module. This is the uh, data coming out of it going to the car. And of course there's your microprocessor on the negative terminal. So like so again my case I just left it disconnected and I've been that way for a couple months now uh, with no problems now this is my opinion um, do with it as you will but to me when you disconnect this IBS sensor it just re reverts back to the old standard um, regulator on the alternator just putting out 14 point eight volts or what have you and it just reverts it back to an old system and I think it does maybe uh, increase the idle RPM a little bit just to make sure but other than that it's just real basic and so it should work just fine now it uh, with not having the monitoring capabilities it I guess theoretically won't last as long which is possible but um, like in my case, I'm just going to leave it disconnected, and we'll see how long it lasts. Uh, it's a new battery, just put it back in there in December. Um, I said two months uh, on the other video, but you know, just slightly over a month, but no problems. And I don't foresee any either. Now, another thing that would kind of nice about this as well is that in my case, I put another battery in it. I don't need to register it because it's not monitoring anything. Just if this thing goes out again, just put another battery in it and I'm done. Alright, so in the end, if you're having similar uh, problems as I did, uh, control messages, you know, the uh, clock losing its time, like especially in my case where a car wasn't starting, not even attempting to start, it could very well be the problem. And especially say if you're stuck somewhere, it doesn't hurt anything at all to disconnect that connector going to the car module and see if it starts.